All right. Hi, I, I am Lewis Perkins, and I want to thank Tim and Nora and Monica and Michael and all of you for, for inviting me to be here today to speak a little bit about what the Cradle to Cradle Products Innovation Institute is doing and who we are in our role uh, in, in the Cradle to Cradle world and family. So the Cradle to Cradle Products Innovation Institute was founded in 2010 with the goal of being the administrator and the governance of the Cradle to Cradle product standard. Many of you in the room are, are part of the family because I see, I see manufacturers who have been certifying products for years, some new to the family. In fact, I presented a, a certification to someone, uh, a certificate to someone out in the hall this, earlier this morning. And so the, the growth that we're seeing is more and more companies are getting engaged in not only joining the circular economy, but looking at how the design of safe products, safe materials, which can be perpetually cycled, and have positive impact on humans and planet. And so it's a holistic equation that we're presenting from a product design and manufacturing standpoint. Uh, and it's the privilege that we have at the Institute uh, to work on uh, every day. So currently, we've been, we've been growing the program. We have over, over 550 certifications, uh, which represents something over 600 products if you look at how each certification can oftentimes represent uh, a, a, a bundled a, a number of products uh, that are manufactured under the same facility using the same homogenous materials. Um, we think this is great, but we also have high ambitions. We want exponential growth in our program, and it's why our team and, and the accredited assessors we work with are tireless in getting out and meeting with companies and sharing, sharing this work, uh, because it is our goal to, to make this number uh, not just 500, but 500 thousand, five hundred million. I mean, our, our goal is to transform the way we make things, really as, as laid out by, by the book that, that Michael and, and Bill wrote in, 2000, in 2002. So we're growing our community, and we're doing that strategically. So there's two sides of the Institute. One is the, the product certification program that is, that is administering. We have a team of PhDs and, and other members of our team who review the certification applications, who are looking at and auditing the assessments that are done by the companies uh, through their assessment work. Uh, this group also is working very strongly now on the revisions of our standard. We are working on a new version, which we expect to be out a year from now. And about six months from now, you can look toward our website to make public comments and reviews on the criteria. So we're currently in the phase of writing, writing the proposed concepts and criteria for making new additions. And overall, I would say, well, the, the growth of this standard, we talk about cradle to cradle for companies as being a continuous improvement roadmap. Well, it's also a continuous improvement roadmap for ourselves, because as the world is changing, as concepts like circular economy, as, as the, the revelation of safe, healthy materials and products continues to increase, our standard becomes more rigorous as it adapts to uh, the times that are shifting. Uh, our aim is to always be the highest standard, the North Star for product design and manufacturing because of the holistic nature of our work. So one of the ways, and I talk about, so that's one side of our, our business, and then the other side is the marketing, the communications, the brand building, and the relationship building that we do. And so our goal is to bring as many partners together as possible. And so over the last few years, we've started working on movements that are within the cradle-to-cradle -cradle movement and based on sectors. The first one that we launched was four years ago. Uh, we, we launched an initiative for the apparel and textile industry, and that's called Fashion Positive. Again, the concept is that rather than so many of the fashion industry players, supply chain are really focusing on removing chemicals of concern, reducing their energy use, water use, all based on LCA and less bad. Certainly those efficiencies are, are recommended and, and important and a first step towards this kind of work. But ultimately, Cradle to Cradle is based on abundance and based on positive uh, impact. And so we've, we've developed this initiative, Fashion Positive, to not only attract uh, companies that are interested in making products that can be circular, safe, and healthy, but also that are part of a movement towards um, recognizing not what's not in your product or what your product's not doing, but what your product is doing. So the, the uh, 
emphasis is on the positive. Our goal really then is that we believe that there's a, there's a huge movement within the fashion industry around circular economy. And uh, Ellen MacArthur Foundation has certainly created a tremendous platform for that based on the work that, that has been laid out with cradle to cradle, natural capitalism, biomimicry. These are all coming together and culminating uh, now in a movement around positive impact fashion. So we believe that if you're really building circular fashion, it has to be safe and healthy. And a circular also refers to the energy, the water, the humans that are interacting with it, because we're talking about a circular regenerative system. So for us, circular fashion is cradle to cradle fashion. And we aim to to help companies understand that the cradle to cradle standard is one that will actually verify that a company is building material inputs for circularity, whether that's a finished garment or whether that's fibers, dyes, trims, buttons, zippers, etc. So we've partnered with a couple brands in the last few years. These are the brands we're working with now. Caring is a house of brands you're familiar with. Uh, including Gucci, Balenciaga, Yves Saint Laurent, Stella McCartney, Puma. Uh, we also have Stella uh, McCartney putting members on this team as well too. Maria Cornejo out of the U.S., uh, Marks and Spencer, Loom State, Eileen Fisher, and H&M. And the goal for this group is to come together and look at what are the most critical materials that are preventing these products from being circular. And that doesn't just mean uh, closing the loop of t-shirt to t-shirt or shoe to shoe. It means looking at the, the most intelligent ways in which these materials will be perpetually cycled and ensuring that these products have been verified through a credible system, which, which is our system, cradle to cradle certification. So um, we're excited that these groups are working. They've put together a whole list of preferred materials. You can go on our website, c2ccertified.org, and, and see what those materials are. And we're reaching out through our assessor community to the suppliers that make these materials to ensure as sort of a first step toward working towards the ultimate goal, which is final stage garment production. You'll hear a little later today in one of the breakouts from CNA about the work they've been doing on, on the final stage uh, shirts. And that's ultimately our goal is that we want to lower the cost and, and create high volume materials that can be assessed towards final stage garment certification. Some of the recent wins in the fashion industry, I just mentioned CNA and the shirts. We also had Stella McCartney working on uh, innovating yarns, uh, wool yarns for, um, for knitwear. Uh, as a result of that work, it also um, led to the supplier in uh, Italy to provide more yarns towards other customers beyond Stella McCartney. It also led them to go back into the supply chain and look at the wool and the scouring agents that were used as a result of the wool. And so now having certified wool, certified yarns, and the next step will be certified knitwear. So we're excited about this progression because it also means that the cradle to cradle regenerative principles are applied at each one of these positions of the supply chain where the wool is scoured, where the yarn is spun, where the knitting happens. So our impact is bigger. And for us, that's exciting because at the end of the day, the certifications are the proof that the companies have done the work. It's the way that we third party verify that this work has happened, but ultimately seeing that impact across the supply chain grow uh, is what we're, why we're doing this work. The next initiative that we've launched this last year follows in a similar model around the built environment. And I know today is focused uh, greatly around the discussion of buildings uh, and, and the impact of buildings. Uh, buildings as material banks is a concept presented, uh, Ken presented it, and it's in many of the discussions today too. We also envision that a circular building is, is designed with material inputs that have been verified no, no different from fashion in many ways, but we're talking about carpet and flooring and tile and cement and glass and all the inputs that go into buildings. So as we look at this co conversation that's happening at a larger level around buildings as material banks, we know that the Cradle to Cradle certification program verifies the inputs going into buildings. And we want to build a case for the high value of these materials to continuously cycle into other usages in future uh, uh, uses. So we've created uh, a group of owners and developers 
and um, builders and architects who've joined with us to meet and um, begin the discussion of raising the awareness of cradle to cradle as a preferred quality standard for products going into buildings. Uh, and so, as you can see behind me, we have a good number of companies coming out of Silicon Valley, Facebook, Google, LinkedIn, Salesforce, but we also have some global real estate uh, owners and developers, Cushman Wakefield and Jones Lang LaSalle. We have BAM, we have Harvard University, Delta Development in the Netherlands, uh, and Wells Fargo Banks. Uh, and this list will grow. We're having an event in Amsterdam at the Park 2020 development next week um, for these owners and developers as a roundtable for them to begin to discuss um, how the Cradle to Cradle certification program and the products themselves become more valuable to buildings as material banks. With that, then, we have companies who are supporting that, companies with certified products who are very anxious to get their products in front of these, uh, these influencers, these purchasers. And so we think there's a lot of strength in bringing these brands together who are supporting the costs associated with it and also helping us generate some content, some marketing, some curriculum, videos, you know, how we can t tell and share. So if you go to our website again, you'll find a link to the Built Positive and you can watch some videos we've already created. And in the next few months, we'll be starting to work on some content that will be uh, valuable to owners, architects, developers. Um, and our, our sponsors for this work are Google, Building Green, Meco Systems, Shaw, Dyson Krupp, Tarquette, Construction Specialties, Vitra, and Steelcase. And again, these are just a small sample of the companies that are certifying products going into the built environment. But for us, you know, less than this being an advertisement for them is really about showing how the community is coming together. And one of the, the big global trends we see in the sustainability movement is a shift from looking at sustainability as a competitive advantage to looking at sustainability as something that we only do when we collaborate and work together. And, and as Ken pointed out in his, in his presentation, uh, building this circular economy and building a cradle-to-cradle -cradle world only, is going to only happen if all systems are connecting. Uh, these aren't closed loops, these are open loops, so we need more players at the table. And, uh, and within Built, Built uh, Positive, then, some of the things that these architects, owners, developers are talking about in terms of the cradle-to-cradle -cradle products are the material health, you know, safe materials going into buildings. Um, what is the value chain for collaboration around these materials? Who has it? Who owns it? Who leases it? Who wants it? What's the value of that? It's critical to them uh, to know the value of these materials if they're going to have some uh, potential draw towards reuse. Um, circular design obviously is within the realm of the, of the building designers uh, and certainly the product designers. Um, designing for reuse, disassembly, again, this is something that we don't do, but it's a conversation that's happening at their level and we want to foster that conversation because ultimately products that are certified cradle to cradle must have a strategy for how they can be um, collected and reused and put back into systems. And so we want to join the circular economy by presenting more um, proof points and case studies as to how products are being collected, how these manufacturers and how these building owners are working together to ensure that the material flows are continuing through use cycles. And then finally, realizing that value. So it's not only about defining who's part of the value chain, but then what is the economic value. And again, uh, uh, the product standard side of us doesn't really get into the evaluation of the econo what economic sense this makes, but the business side of our organization is very interested in ensuring that we can prove back to companies what is the ROI on the Cradle to Cradle certification program. So then what's next? So that's what we've been doing now. Well, we've got our hands full with these two initiatives, and we're also, as I said earlier, in the process of revising our standard for version 4.0, and I do invite you to go to our website because we'll be updating when there's an opportunity for public review, and we want everyone in this room and everyone you know to potentially take a look at some of the recommendations that will be made by our technical experts and advisors in the coming months. I mentioned that impact and ROI is important, uh, important to us. We've, we felt strongly that making the case for Cradle to Cradle has been, um, has been very clear for the companies who've been doing it. And oftentimes it's a, it's a 
a project that becomes because their values are attached to designing for cradle to cradle. And uh, we want to make sure that we can actually connect the values to value. And so we've been working with KPMG on developing a framework, a value, valuation framework for the cradle to cradle standard, so we can start to look at case studies of particular materials that have been certified, that have been optimized and improved as a result of the work they've done with our, with our assessors and consultants, and then how that value compares to a conventional product. Again, the more, the more impact we can provide to companies, we recognize the business cases is, is vital. Secondly is, is really understanding business development in terms of the value, and so it's not just having the ROI case studies, but it's how we can provide more opportunities for our community of practice, which consists of the manufacturers and the companies, but also the partners that are out there. We get calls all the time from green building councils and, uh, and fashion organizations and packaging-related you know, consortiums around how, how they too can, can reach out and bring more companies into cradle to cradle. And so our goal at the Institute is to help provide more of those opportunities to our partners and, and certainly to the consultants and assessors that are doing this work. We, we believe that the cradle-to-cradle -cradle value proposition is based on two things in terms of the standard, the cradle-to-cradle -cradle standards value proposition. One is the quality. You know, we're only as good as our product, and so ensuring the integrity of the, of the data that's collected, ensuring the integrity of the way in which our program is run uh, is paramount to us, and that's, that's what we do with the Institute to ensure we're going for our ISO accreditation, um, which, will, which will give us our, our global recognition as a global standard, uh, which will allow us to be written into more policies, more, more standards and procurements. So that's a good thing for us, and uh, we should be wrapping that up in the next few months. Um, but quality of the program and the standard is vital, and that's why we're having this public review for version 4. And then the second is the strength of the brand. The Cradle to Cradle brand has been so strong within, within this community, within many communities, but we know that it can even be carried wider and that, um, that those who are passionate about it because they've read the book, because they've heard Bill or Michael speak, because they've somehow been attached to a company doing this work, is, it's infectious and it grows just like all of us today. So our, our goal really at the organization is to continue to build on the strength of the brand uh, and that's part of our mission in the next coming year. And as I said before, we, we don't aim to do this alone. We see that this methodology and this wisdom is integral to many initiatives that are out there. Um, and one of the things that we hear as we're out on the road and speak all the time is how many people changed their careers, went to school uh, to get a different degree, uh, went to a different company because they read the book Cradle to Cradle or because they heard our founders speak. This is a constant conversation that we have, and so we know how careers and initiatives have been seeded and embedded with this, with this work. Uh, and so it's important to us that we also continue to ensure that the Cradle to Cradle um, standard is also part of other initiatives that are out there. So some of the groups that we're working with, and this is not an exhaustive list, but these are some of the nonprofits that we have partnerships with, are um, U.S. Green Building Council, DGNB here in Germany, U.K. Green Building Council, Ellen MacArthur Foundation, Circle Economy, Cradle to Cradle Association, uh, C2C Expo Lab in Fenlo, um, the Sustainable Apparel Coalition, and Fashion for Good. These are all organizations that we work more closely with. We have team members who are attached to these organizations, and we ensure um, that, they're, that they're connected to what we're doing. And what that means is that some of the best in thinking of these groups may need to be written or alluded to in our guidance documents for product certification, because we don't want to duplicate efforts if there's groups that are out there doing, doing strong initiatives or things that we can potentially allude to within our work. And conversely, our goal is to be written into every standard that's out there so that companies recognize that they don't have to recreate the wheel. The circular economy doesn't have to have a new standard or logo or label because we have it and it exists. And it's bigger than just circularity. Again, it's about the safety and health of materials that are perpetually, intelligently cycled and with the positive impact on humans and planet. It's a much larger holistic equation that we, that we aim to offer. 
The last piece then is how do we do all of this? And we recognize that much of it will be through technology. So our, our organization has been studying and looking at uh, the role that data and technology will play in helping product designers, uh, back-end systems for design, um, uh, certainly our assessment process, uh, maintaining the highest level of confidentiality and NDA. We're not interested in, in uh, breaking any of that, but we do know that there's a way in which this work can be accelerated when we're starting to look at the way we integrate with existing design tools. So these are some of the conversations we're having now about what would it look like to accelerate the cradle-to-cradle -cradle standard through the use of te technology and collected data. With that being said, uh, I think, do we have question time or is that it? We don't. Okay, thank you so much. I'm here all afternoon. <laughs> all right.